In the mid to late 1960s, everyone and their brother was seeing UFOs. Even I had two rather remarkable sightings. In some areas like Michigan, where the famous swamp gas sightings took place, there was a near hysteria in the air. Many books and magazines appeared on the newsstands to make a buck by sensationalizing people's encounters. And it was amid that uh, frenzy that Gold Key Comics released their UFO Flying Saucers number one. To be exact, the year was 1968. This giant comic featured stories of just, uh, of not just of the 1960s, but other incredible sightings in different decades. First, I'll touch on my favorite stories presented here, and then uh, list out the rest. By the way, I do not see credit listed on any of the stories. Number one, a pilot who chased a UFO. This presents the tragic story of Captain Thomas Mantell Jr. and it was January 7, 1948 when air traffic control at Goodman or Godman Air Force Base was inundated with phone calls reporting a UFO. It was actually tracked on radar and Captain Mantell gave chase but lost control and crashed when he uh, approached the UFO and uh, a dangerously high altitude. The artwork was standard fare for Gold Key Western Publishing Company. The panels depicting the crash sequence were very well done with a dramatic uh, use of color. Uh, the day they buzzed Washington, D.C. This two-page uh, feature is the dramatic events on the night of July 19, 1952, only four years after the crash of Roswell, New Mexico. And on that night, UFOs were seen and tracked over the nation's capital, capital, almost as if to say, we're here and there's not a damn thing you can do about us. The presentation is pretty lame, not even reproducing dramatic photographs that showed the enigmatic lights over the Capitol Dome. This story really needed uh, more than just two pages with nine panels to tell it. Well, my very favorite, Michigan, uh, Mystery in Michigan. These pages uh, are about the sightings which uh, Dr. J. Allen Hynek claimed may have been caused by swamp gas. It was during this flap that I had uh, my disturbing sighting. The story here uh, places the events as occurring in March 1965, but the events actually took place a year later in 1966. The illustrations of the UFO and uh, are actually quite off the, from uh, what had been reported. Seeing these two problems aside, or setting these two problems aside, the story is pretty well told and illustrated. This piece is given three pages, which, uh, with a total of 14 panels. As with all the features in this comic book, no credit is presented as to who uh, wrote or drew it. The following is a complete list of the features in this comic book, as well as some of the more outstanding panels from the book. So, the features are what is the UFO? The real story of the UFOs and flying saucers. The UFO robbery near Leroy, Kansas, 1887. The Foo Fighters from World War II. The age of the flying saucers. The Kenneth Arnold sightings of 1947. Early types of UFOs and flying saucers. The pilot who chased UFOs, 1948, Godman Airfield, Kentucky. The incident over Alabama, July 1948. The Lubbock Lights, Lubbock, Texas, 1951. The Day They Buzzed Washington, July 1952. The Case of the Singed Scoutmaster, Florida, 1962. Life on Other Worlds, Operation Mainbrace, September 1962. Landing in France, September 1954. The Saucer Strike at South America, November 1954. Incident in the Park, December 1954. Panic at Leland, November 1957. Who Flies the Saucers? The Scare at Socorro, New Mexico, 1965. Modern Types of UFOs and Flying Saucers. Another fascinating one, the incident at Exeter, September 1965, Mystery in Michigan, Washtenaw County, 1966, and there was also Earth's um, own flying saucers. Attack at Wanaqui, New Jersey, January 1966, the UFO blackouts of Brazil, 1957, and the great unanswered question. One last item to mention is that the back cover is a poster of the artwork on the front cover. A lot of kids cut them off and hung them up on their walls, but I left my copy intact, though there is some wear and tear to the cover. Uh, but of the several thousand comic books I had as a kid, this is one of the only a handful remaining to me today.
Well, listen, thanks for stopping by. I hope you enjoyed this review. Uh, kind of a nostalgic trip for those of us who grew up in the 1960s, especially those... Uh, mysterious and enigmatic years of 1965 and 66 in particular. Thanks again for stopping by. Have a great day and God bless.